Shalom, brothers and sisters. Shalom. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Trumpet's Call. I'm Mariella. I pray that you are holding on to faith and holding on to hope during these challenging times. Well, thank you for joining me back on the channel and for another session of our sister chat. In this sister chat, we're just going to talk a little bit about the eclipse that happened uh, last month. There was a total lunar eclipse combined with a blood moon all at the same time. We're going to talk a little bit about that, about some insight that the Most High um, had brought to me by our sister, our beloved sister, Tara Katara. And I'm just so grateful to her for reaching out to me with this information because it really blows the lid off of this information for me with regard to spiritual significance. The Most High is speaking, he's speaking, he's speaking in every way possible as we pay attention and as we attune our ears we can hear him speaking to us through circumstances and through the signs, the moon, the stars, and the sun. And so I'm so grateful to Sister Tara for sending me this video, which I will be sharing with you shortly. But we're talking about the lunar eclipse. It was a cloudy night that night during the lunar eclipse. And I actually went out with my husband and found a, a clear field that we could look up and see the moon. And... It was a cloudy night, like I said, and so we could only see bits and pieces of it, but there was a clearing, and so we were able to see it, uh, and it was red, of course, and we could see it being eclipsed by whatever that was moving in front of it. I'm not convinced it was the earth. Um, so whatever that was moving in front of the moon, it was being eclipsed. And I thought, well, okay, that's, that's different. I didn't give it a whole lot of thought. I know that things like that are spiritually significant. But I didn't think to ask questions, and I probably should have asked the Most High to show me what this meant. But I didn't think to do that, and so he brought the information to me through our sister Tara. So I'm grateful to her once again. So we're going to be looking into this total lunar eclipse that happened on May 15th and 16th. And what the Most High has to show us and teach us through this eclipse and through these events. It's just most amazing. So as we look into this, we look at the eclipse. I want to know it, how the eclipse are mentioned in the scriptures. And we see here from BibleTools.com, the mention of the eclipse, it says, of the eclipse of the sun is alluded to in Amos 8.9, Micah 3.6, Zechariah 14.6, and Joel 2.8. And in these verses of scripture, it's talking about the sun becoming dark or the sun not giving its light. These are the verses that they're saying alludes to an eclipse. Eclipses were regarded as tokens of Yahuwah's anger. We see that in Joel 3.15 and Job 9.7. The darkness at the crucifixion has been ascribed to an eclipse, Matthew 27.45. But on the other hand, it is argued that the great intensity of darkness caused by an eclipse never lasts more than six minutes, and this darkness lasted for three hours. Moreover, at the time of the Passover, the moon was full, and therefore could not be an eclipse of the sun, which is caused by an interposition of the moon between the sun and the earth. Okay, so this is um, their assessment of eclipse as it's stated in the scriptures. But I really wanted to focus on one particular line in this article is it talks about eclipses being regarded as a token of Yahuwah's anger. I can see that. And we see it at different times when the Most High pronounces his judgment and when he talks about bringing forth his judgment, he also he combines it with some measure of darkness. Okay, And I believe that when the Most High judges, he draws near himself. And when he draws near, darkness is under his feet. Hallelujah, as the scripture teaches us. The darkness is under his feet. We read in 2 Samuel chapter 22, uh, beginning at verse 10. He bowed the heavens also and came down with thick darkness under his feet. And he appeared on the wings of the wind. And he made darkness canopies around him, a mass of waters, thick clouds of the sky. From the brightness before him, Coals of fire were kindled. Yahuwah thundered from the heaven, and the Most High uttered his voice, and he sent out arrows and scattered them, lightning and routed them. Okay, and so it goes on. I love this. I love this verse of scripture. This is also a psalm. And so one of the things that we see when the Most High draws near, 
he draws near in darkness. And it's not because he is darkness. It's because when he draws near, those who are wicked or those who don't see him in his proper light see him as darkness. When he indeed is the intentative light that would destroy the eyes, he is so bright. And so this idea of an eclipse in a spiritual sense could be an indication of the Most High's wrath as he draws near to judge the earth. So we're going to continue on. We're also going to talk here a little bit about blood moons. And in this article on spiritualityhealth.com, we read, The appearance of a blood moon has had spiritual meaning throughout history. The ancient Incas and Mesopotamians believed the blood moon was an omen portending death and the overthrow of the king. Let that sink in, brothers and sisters. Death and the overthrow of the king, or perhaps many kings, or perhaps a nation. Babylon, perhaps? Some Native American tribes believed that a blood moon meant that the moon needed care. Islamic cultures view the phenomenon as a time for special prayers. The blood moon took on a spiritual meaning more widely in 2013, as the blood moon prophecy was picked up by media channels and shared widely. Christian preachers interpreted a series of prophecies in the Bible that spoke of the end of days following a sequence, or a specific sequence, of lunar and solar eclipses. As the term blood moon became widely known, it prompted intense interest and widespread examination of the phenomenon. Clearly, the blood moon sparked curiosity and the imagination of many. Blood moon is a descriptive phrase for a total lunar eclipse that takes place during the full moon. The reddish color, though, ominous, is simply the result of the scattering of sunlight through the Earth's atmosphere, similar to what happens during sunsets that appear red. Okay, so that is their assessment according to spiritualityhealth.com. And I want to focus in on the first line, that the blood moon was believed to be an omen pretending, portending death and the overthrow of a king. So if you put those two things together, what we learned about the eclipse and what we learned about the blood moon, the, what we learned about the eclipse was that when the eclipse appears, it's an indication of the anger or the wrath of Yahuwah as he draws near to judge. And if you combine that with the idea of the blood moon being an omen portending unto death and overthrow of a king, these two go together perfectly. You can see then combined it is the Most High drawing near with darkness under his feet to judge the nations, to judge the kings, bringing death and destruction to those who are disobedient and refuse to repent. You can see that. And so this is what a blood moon total eclipse indicates. Okay, This is what it indicates or can indicate. Continuing on. So we're going to read Joel chapter 2, verses 30 through 32, and it reads, And I will shew wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of Yahuwah come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of Yahuwah shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as Yahuwah hath said, and in the remnant whom Yahuwah shall call. So what we see represented here is an indication or some signs of things that shall be happening when Messiah returns and when the Father arises in his Son to judge the nations. We're going to see uh, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. And if you go and look at the book of Revelation and look at the trumpet judgments and the bowl judgments and the seals being released, you see images, you see these same images being represented. And the sun will be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. This is a consistent theme that we see in the scriptures. It's apocalyptic language, as it were. So before the day of Yahuwah comes, we're going to see these sorts of things happening. So every time we have a blood moon or an eclipse or anything of that nature, it only points to the day of Yahuwah coming. It points and says, it's coming, it's drawing near. And I believe when you see these things begin to increase in frequency, it's saying, it's getting near, it's getting near. So I encourage you to take a look to see how many blood moons we've had recently in the past few years and how many eclipses. I have never in my adult life remember having so many eclipses. There are 
all the time, they're happening all the time, okay? And so as a result, we can understand and know by the Ruach that the time of the drawing near of our Messiah is coming, it's hastening. And all those who call upon the name of Yahuwah will be saved, will be delivered. And that would be us. We are calling upon the name of Yahuwah and we're asking him to send his salvation, to send deliverance. And when we call upon his name in faith, and in a place of repentance, he will hear us and he will deliver us from this land of captivity. Okay, now we're reading from Revelation chapter 6, verses 11 through 13. And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet a little season, until their fellow servants also, and their brethren, that should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. And we spoke about this on my lesson on Revelation chapter 16. I believe that the fellow servants who are to be killed are to be the 144,000 who I believe are the two witnesses of Revelation chapter 11. And I beheld when they had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. You see these persistent themes. We saw the same thing in Joel. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth as a fig tree, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And so we see here, in these verses, a, the darkening of the sun and the moon being turned into blood. It's a precursor before the day of Yahuwah. We see all that in Joel. We see it in Matthew chapter 24. And we also see it here in Revelation chapter 6. And so the fact that we're seeing this with such frequency, it's speaking and it's telling us that the day of Yahuwah is drawing near. Hallelujah. So now we're going to talk a little bit about what Sister Tara sent me. She sent me a video as she was seeing the eclipse she watched the eclipse at her home in her backyard and as she was watching it it wasn't quite clear enough for her because it was you know as i said it was cloudy it was a cloudy evening that night when the eclipse happened and so she took out her camera phone or her phone and pulled up her app she has a an app that allows her to see the constellations in the heavens and so she took out that app and began to point it up at the heavens and allowed whatever image to come on the screen come on the screen as she was you know filming and recording on her phone and then she sent that to me and when she did I went wow now she sent it and she gave some assessment about what she thought and she was spot on in her assessment as she sent it to me and as I saw it I saw what she saw and so what you've been seeing on the screen is a play, a play-by-play, -play, essentially, of the entire process of the eclipse as it's been happening, it's been sped up. So this is the eclipse that we saw on May 15th and 16th, okay? And so as you can see, the moon does appear red as it's being covered up. And so the scripture is describing a situation in which the moon is looking red like this and the sun itself is dark as well. So what would cause the moon to be dark or red and the sun to be dark as well? It'd have to be another presence, another presence of another heavenly body, okay? So let's get into her video and then we can discuss what we're seeing in her video. So as we look at her video, we see her in her backyard and then we see her holding up her phone and then the constellations begin to appear. You see right there that constellation that appears initially by the moon where the moon is is the scales. There's scales as in scales of justice. That's where the moon is. And then you see just above that is Virgo the Virgin. You see the Virgin that's just above the moon and then to the right and um, north of the Virgin is a lion, the lion of the tribe of Judah. So what you see in these images as they're playing out, you see the moon pointing to the scales of justice and then you see the nation of Yashara represented by the woman. You see that here, the woman right here in the sky, just to the north of the moon as the moon is rising. And then just north of that is Leo the lion, okay, who was the lion of the tribe of Judah. And so all put together, what we see here is a picture or a story of the Mosai telling us through this eclipse that the lion of the tribe of Judah will bring justice to Yasharal. <laughs> this is what we saw during this eclipse. 
and we didn't know it. And had this sister not pulled out her phone and seen these constellations in the sky line up perfectly, perfectly with the moon and the moon moving into the scales of justice and then rising, we would have not known. So the Most High is speaking to us. He spoke to us on May 15th and 16th, and he gave us a message. The Most High is sending his salvation, and he will wrought justice for Yasharah. He will. The Lion of the tribe of Judah is coming, and he's coming with wrath and vengeance, and he's going to avenge his beloved. Hallelujah. And we are so grateful for that. We look forward to that day that we see his face, and we bow at his feet, and we worship him, and we honor him in a way that is, he is worthy of, because he is worthy of all honor. Hallelujah. He's worthy of praise. And we esteem Yahusha Hamashiach high. He is the leader of our nation. And soon he's going to come and bring the kingdom. And he's going to vanquish our foes. And he's going to deliver us and bring us home. And when we see these things begin to draw near, we can rejoice and look up for our redemption draweth nigh. So once again, I just want to thank Sister Tara uh, Katara for sending me the video and I wanted to share it with you to encourage you that weeping endures for a night but joy comes in the dawn and the day star is dawning. He's coming. He's returning. He's bringing justice for Judah, justice for Ephraim, justice for Yasharah and he will gather his beloved and bring us back home into our land, the land flowing with milk and honey and we will live together, one another, linking arms, living in righteousness and in peace, serving our King and serving the Father. No more looking to the nations to do and, and follow after their forms and their fashion. But we will lead in righteousness and the nations this time, they will emulate us. They will follow after us. They will do the things that we're doing as we give praise and honor to the Most High. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is such an encouraging word this is such an encouraging word from the Most High, and I wanted to share it with you. So I pray that you were baruched by it as much as I was when I saw it. May the Most High Baruch and keep you, brothers and sisters. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and grant you shalom, peace, peace, and more peace. Today and every day, brothers and sisters, I thank the Most High for you. And I pray that if you haven't done so yet, join us in the group chats over at WhatsApp and on Telegram. And all you do in order to do that is to send me an email at trumpetscall at proton.me. Trumpetscall at proton.me. And then we can get you the code to get you signed up and join us. We're having a wonderful time of fellowship over there. So join us if you can. Shalom and shalom. Mm -hmm.